we know that the guys on our side of the field can take it back and I assume 22 Dumonte Ridley a freshman from Colquitt County has the ability to to take it the distance Matt Pierce standing right around his five yard line and kicking off will be Jerry Martin a junior from Fort Lauderdale and we're ready to play football here tonight at Baysmore Hunter Stadium about Austin State Edward Waters the ball is in the air it's going to go to Matt at the eight yard line straight up the middle now he's at the 20 he wants to try to get outside cuts back in gets to the 30 uh, not quite the 30 about the 29 yard line so pretty good return from Matt Pierce tackled uh, all right the first number I look at I don't have it on my roster here so that's good <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what uh, Matt Pierce did a great job at actually bringing that ball out to about the 29 yard line I thought he was going to get more yards by that by that but uh Hey, you, you seen the, the guy come in and actually grab a hold of his jersey, get him down to the ground. Matt's going to send to the far side. Quinn Robertson and number 83 starting the ninth night. Uh, Cliff Pettiford on the far side. Shontavious Jones here on the near side of the field. And then in the slot, we move Reggie Lewis. Going to go sit on the other side of the field. One back. Going to throw it out. Caden is out in the flat. Got Austin out there. He's trying to find some room. He's hitting. Gets just across the 30, about the 31 yard line. A good tackle from number 17, Marquise Davis, a linebacker. Yeah, that was a little bit of a new pass I seen by Katie Cocker. They throw it uh, backwards pass to, uh, to uh, Scott and actually get it out there on the wing and he got Hur a couple. Yards. Hurry up offense for the Blazers. Once they're out in the flat and a good defensive play there, a dangerous throw. Good coverage on the far side of the field by Arthur Smith, the linebacker, junior from Buford, South Carolina. And Dickie didn't actually get his hand on the ball, but he just got in the way. But what concerned me, if he caught the ball, he was going to run past me on the 10-yard line down here. So the Blazers are all immediately here at third and nine on their first drive of this evening. Blazers talked about coming out running the football, and we've uh, two pass plays right off the bat. So now the Blazers bunch three line, three receivers on the far side. Sean Tavis over here by himself on the near side in single coverage. Caden wants about 10 yards for the first down. Got a man wide open. Reggie catches it at the 50, across the 50, gets down to the 47-yard line, and that's Reginald Lewis. And, Dick, he was wide open, like you just said. Uh, Reginald Lewis got in the middle of the field. Nobody was around him. Got down past the 50-yard line, and that was a great throw by Katie Cochran. And now, if you look, uh, Charles Stretch was uh, open as well. Absolutely. Same formation, three to the far side. One back, Austin Scott in there. Going to give it to Austin. Off the left side, he's at the 45, across the 40, still fights and gets down to about the 36-yard line. They're going to 37-yard line. They're going to put it. That's another first down for Valdosta State. After three, two questionable plays, the Blazers, three really good plays right in a row. Caden gets him to the line of scrimmage, not giving him any time to rest over there. Pettiford goes to the far side again. First down. I cannot say it enough how much I like Austin Scott. He is a great back back there, especially as a freshman, to have the vision that he has. And he, he drugged about two or three people down the field on that play as well. Caden changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock. Uh, hadn't started yet. Uh, hadn't started. started. Okay. Three receivers again, far side, one on the home side. Going to run it off the right side with Austin Scott. Tries to get to the corner, and he turns the corner, stops, and tries to cut. And only gets about a yard out of that play good defense on the far Number side of the field by veteran Balfour flower Balfour excuse me and watch for that same play uh, in a little while and Caden's gonna keep the ball because they bit 100% on the uh, handoff second and nine for the Blazers at Edward Waters 36 yard line 13 15 to go in the first quarter first drive of the night Caden back in the shotgun with back one back there, and that's Cedric O'Neill back there with him this time. Throws it out, Cedric's out there, makes the catch. He's at the 40, the 35, cuts back in, and then back out, crosses the 30, going to be about a yard or two short of the first down. And on the tackle over there was Kevin Hutchinson. One thing I'm noticing already, just by the start of this game, right off the state offense, the backs and the wide receivers are so much faster than this Edward Waters defense. We can be able to get anything we want to when it gets later in this game. We're kind of setting them up to see what the defense is going to show us. Pettiford and Reggie Lewis go the far side. They're going to line up actually three on the far side. Uh, on the far side also is uh, Quinn Robertson. Bring Reggie Lewis back in motion. They're going to fake it to him. Big hole, O'Neill at the 25, has the first down at the 25 yard line, Cedric O'Neill. They brought uh, Reggie Lewis in motion from the far side, because uh, I'm sure they've seen on tape that he can run the football. 
I like this combination, though. A lot of running, a couple of throws downfield, because you're kind of telling them that we can do both things. And when you set a team up for the run, the pass comes open every time. Twelve and a half minutes to go. First quarter, first drive of the Blazers. First and ten at Edward Waters' 25-yard line. Three receivers in close. Caden wants to throw. Looking. Plenty of time. Just standing there. He's going to run. Now he's going to throw. Gets it across to the 19-yard line. Caden probably could have run for 15 there and he threw the ball to Reggie. I mean, he just stood there. He had no pressure. Great job that huge offensive line, Tom. Uh, Nick, I totally agree, but I don't care about Cade really running to this game if we don't have to make him run. Well, maybe so. Didn't even ask Coach Dean that. Tom, did you see that Cliff Pettiford yeah. was wide open down there on the other side? That's the guy. They get a late player off the field. Blazers have it second and four. Good opening drive. Have had a, almost four minutes. O'Neill inside. O'Neill to 15. At the 10, he's at the five stops, cuts and gets down right to the five yard line. Good run from Cedric O'Neill there. He stopped and tried to turn directions about twice. First and goal for Valdosta State injured player on the field for Edward Waters. He's just sitting up and uh, hope he's all right. I don't know. Nick, I'll tell y'all two a little story you probably don't want to hear while we're waiting, but I got a, the good news is for me, I got a checkup Tuesday and I just, uh, all my blood work came back fine and, and all, and the, but my doctor walked up here on the sidelines and uh, gave me a high five and said, oh, by the way, I hadn't washed my hands since Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, uh, we're, we're glad that that came back because you're going to be with us for a long time. I can't come no here, guarantees there, but I was glad to get a good report. Yeah, I guess it's my same doctor, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it is. He's, I'm standing here by him. We won't mention his name over the air. Well, I'll tell you what. He's got Dr. Hogan has you and me and Wes James as three of his patients. Oh, man. He, yeah, I mean, he comes up. Only only Doc can come up with those remarks. Yeah, and uh, he's always so caring in the uh, room when you get in there, too. Tom, make sure you tell Dr. Hogan I said hi as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, we did. We didn't put your name with it. <laughs> Dick's laughing because you're his doctor, too. Uh, and Marty's. <laughs> so they got, uh, looks like the, our the uh, Houston Clinic staff's out there. Russ Hoff of Valdosta State out on the field. He's sitting up. I think he doesn't seem to be any pain, but that doesn't always mean a whole lot. As the Blazers have a good drive going here on their opening drive. Hey, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I'd tell you, your doctor said you could come in and said you could sign his hand. Oh. He's speechless. Dick, he's speechless. He doesn't know what to say. I'll tell you what. I mean, the only reason that um, we, we, we are at the five-yard line is because he kind of slipped. Other than that, he would have walked straight through into the end zone um, as we're, you know, about he's, to get back here to play. He's here. walking off the field, but they're taking him over to Valdosta State's uh, locker room, which probably because of our training staff and uh, the Houston Clinic doctors there. So. He's walking, appears to be what looks like to me a hand injury, uh, Tom, more than anything. It looks like his wrist or hand, yeah. Dick. I'll let you know a little bit later. So here we go. Blazers first and goal. They're going to go three receivers far side. And the lone running back will be Cedric O'Neill's a little bigger. He's 5'11", 197. First and goal for Valdosta State. Going to give it to Cedric off the left side, and he's going to fight and touchdown Valdosta State. I do believe, yes, it is. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, it was on his own after the initial contact, Charles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with a big dose of uh, freshmen that we have given to Edward Waters tonight. They're seeing two big backs. They're going to see them all night long. Uh, number seven, Cedric O'Neill, he, he made that play happen. It was great that he got that play into the end zone because he slipped on the five-yard line last time. Charles Morton, Stafford Austin, Roberts will uh, hold it. Or excuse me, Justin Roberts. And, of course, Daniel Anderson will kick it to try to make it seven. Kicks up and good. It's good. Seven to nothing. Blazers lead at seven to nothing on a very nice drive, Charles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that drive right there was 10 plays, 71 yards, three minutes, 29 seconds. What a great drive by Valdosta State. That's what we need to see all night long. Cedric O'Neill's third rushing touchdown of the season. Here's the kick in the air for Valdosta State. A return from the 12 yard line. He's at the 15 and tripped up there. Nice tackle from Valdosta State. And he's been good all year. Theseus Jackson. And I just, I, I really haven't asked. Yeah, Hooper has, but Lisa Jackson was one of our best running backs last year. He's not seeing any lick of playing time, but he, he is tremendous on special teams. You tell you, I tell you what, when you have some great backs back there, you have a big option to choose from. I, I mean, you got freshmen out there that can play well. I think Coach Dean is going with who's playing best that night. And we know Theseus can get out there and do what he got to do. You got to look at your future sometimes as well. So here we go with this uh, dangerous offense. They're going to go empty backfield. Five receivers. 
Blazers have four down linemen. Now they bring them back, uh, one of their backs back into the backfield with them, and that's Philip Teamer. He's their uh, leading rusher. They put him in motion. They're going to throw out in the flat to him, and he's at the 25, the 30. Good play for off the bat for the guys from Jacksonville, Edward Waters. Might, have been, might be a first down, Dick. It is a first down across the 30 to about the 31 yard line. That was a pretty nice play set up. I'll tell you what, does that look like the same play that we ran for the first uh, play of our series? A uh, backwards pass there in, in, in a run from their team as well. They're going to go more traditional now. They're going to go two receivers far side. Actually, they're going to go empty backfield again. They're putting their running back teamer, they're lining him up as a receiver, then they shift him to the backfield. Bring one of the receivers from the far side. And they're going to go under center this time. Put a guy in motion. Going to hand it inside. Now they're going to option it. We got some black shirts out there, but he's going to be run out of bounds at the 35. Picks up about four yards on the play. Not about. He picks up four yards. And that's number 19, Sawan Hilton. A, uh, I believe that was 19. Yeah, sophomore. Dick, I'm going to tell you what. I already like how VSU's getting to the ball on that option right there if you remember last week we were a little bit slow to it it was kind of tricking us just a little bit he was getting more down downfield about five or ten yards last week now we're getting out there getting them in the backfield giving them one or two yards and again now they're going to go two to the far side one on the home side and the quarterback uh, dawson i'm sure that dawson uh, he's going to go under center run off the left side gets to the 40s about a yard short of the first down That's number actually number 13, Brandon Turner, the quarterback, 6'1", 180, a senior from Thompson, Georgia. Guys, 31 is down, but he's tying his shoe, so. Okay, well, that's good news. I have a feeling that we're going to see a whole lot of quarterback uh, keepers here in this game uh, today for Edward Waters. Uh, doesn't look like he wants to give up the ball. Looks like he's an athlete. Uh, he was going to have a lot of yards on the, on the ground for him. Turner only needs a, a, a half a yard to get the first down. It's been a nice drive. There's a flag now. What do we got here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. And the way that Edward Waters is reacting is on them. That's going to cost him five, make a third and about six now. Illegal formation is that one was. Lisa's glad to see a flag on the other side tonight. Uh, they started off and move them back on third down. Uh, now that one or half a yard that they had turns into five yards, six yards that they have to go to get the first down. Inside 10 minutes on this play, they got to get it just across the, to the 41 yard line. And they've looked good on this drive, I will say. Brandon Terman, the quarterback, and they've got everybody bunched in tight. One back there in the backfield with him. He's going to drop back and roll out, wants to throw it. He's going to be hit and throws, but he's got the first down across the 40. At about the 42-yard line, a very, very nice play. The Blazers came close to getting him, but Terman was able to, to get it away. Absolutely. That, that's a great uh, call by you. He was in the, the defense for uh, Valencia State was in the backfield, had him there, and he barely got that ball away. I know next time they're going to get the paws on him and, and bring him down to the ground. So, Tom, first and 10 there. This, this is a different bunch, as Coach Dean said, than we saw two years ago. Well, they're definitely more disciplined, Dick. They're showing they got some athletic ability. They're moving the football. Got a good quarterback in there. Blazers need to stop here. Now they're at the 40. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to pitch. Now we got a lot of black shirts. He avoids it. He's got some room on the right side to 50. And he's going to be tackled with another first down across the uh, end of Blazer territory about the 46. We had four shirts there, Tom. He just slammed on the brakes, guys. Uh, misdirection went the other way and uh, picked up a first down. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I did say and I want to mention again is that if we stay disciplined and, and keep to our assignments, that will happen every time. We missed him just a little bit because he reversed to the other side. But I like the way that we were disciplined. We stayed where we were supposed to stay at. And the quarterback was dead in the waters for a second there. Yeah, 8.50 to go in the first quarter. Blazers lead at 7 to nothing. But Edward Waters, a good drive at Valdosta State's 46-yard line. Going from uh, left to right on your radio. Man, receiver in motion. Going to drop. Going to throw the middle. And it's dropping. It was wide open there. Number 23 was wide. Slapped open and dropped it. And yes, he, he catches that ball. Uh, and Charles Hughes runs right towards me and then cuts back for a touchdown. You're absolutely right. We've seen that a couple of times this year where he splits out. He goes down in the middle of the field. And he's wide open. We have to watch that behind the linebackers. Safeties have to come up a little bit. You have to watch that play all night tonight because they're going to try it again after they've seen how wide open he was. 
that time there. Second and turban, uh, second and ten for Brandon Turman, what I was trying to say. <laughs> got, got him on the move. Got a, one back in the backfield with him. He's under center. Hand off inside and gets to the 40, 39 yard line. So they picked up about seven. I think Ryan, Ryan the Smith makes a good and tackle, Dick, but he uh, gets seven yards before we tackle him. I'll tell you what, Tom and Dick, they are making the, uh, this is a pretty good drive for them. Edward Mortis is making a pretty good drive. Absolutely, Absolutely a good drive. They've been, the quarterback's doing a good job of reading. He throws it well. And now they've got a second, third down, and they need three to keep the drive going. Eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Valdo State leads at seven to nothing. But Edward Waters has a drive going here. Just got to get it to 36 to keep it going. Toss sweep, stop, hit, and did he get the first down? I don't, yeah, he's going to get the first down. Lyman's got him up just about the 35 yard line. He was driven back to the 37, but a good run that time from uh, Ralph Schuler. He's from Apopka, Florida. First down, Dick. In Blazer territory, farther down at the 36. Early on, extremely impressed with what I'm seeing from Edward Waters. I tell you, uh, it seems like we're getting in the backfield. We're just missing the tackle. Uh, we're, we're stopping them dead. We think that they're dead, and they actually uh, get through some type of hole and get some positive yards on each play. We have to stop them and get a hold of them in the backfield when we get back there. Brandon Turman's going to go. Was empty backfield. Now he moves number eight, Balfour, back there with him. Inside handoff and picks up good yard again. I mean, they're getting four or five yards of handoff there, Tom. Dick, they are, but, uh, but Charles, I agree with you. The thing about it, they're not really moving our line. They're just maneuvering around our line. Yeah, absolutely. That is a good point, Tom, that you just made. I mean, they're finding the little holes that, you know, the gaps that we're having. We're getting to the backfield. We're finding the ball. We're finding the player. If we get them back, uh, if we get them down in the backfield, we, we would have the ball turned over a long time ago. We just have to make the tackles. So both teams, great opening drives. The Blazers got seven out of theirs, and they're down at Mount Austin State's 32-yard line. A quick first half at almost six-and-a-half-minute marker right now on second down and six. Quarterback keeper pitches at the 30, 25, the 20, inside the 20, runs out of bounds over there. And might get, I hope we don't get a flag. No flag over there. He just was reaching for him, but it'll be first down for Edward Waters. Took out a couple of cheerleaders on that sideline over there. Uh, it could be a, a pretty dangerous sport, I tell you, when you're on the sideline out that way. It is a first down, and the running back over there is a little bit injured on the far side of the field. That was Anthony Wallace. So at Valdosta State, it's been a great drive for them. 6.20 to go. They have just moved it methodically down the field. Great, great option football with this quarterback. Inside handoff, and that's the, that's about the shortest game they've had all night, and that's still one, two, three. So it'll be second and seven for Edward Waters. I'll tell you what, here's the one thing about it. This offense that Edward Waters does, you can't let them stick into the game. You can't let them get closer to the game because what happens is they eat up a lot of clock. They, they The type of offense that they run, they eat up a lot of clock as they have already here in this first uh, quarter. If you let them stay close in the game, they eat up a lot of clock. We don't want that type of game. We want them to go home and say, hey, this team in Valhalla State is a good team. Coach Dean said that during this show, we don't want them to have because they can eat up minutes and minutes and minutes off the clock. The receiver on each side of the field, Blazers holding on to a seven to nothing lead, second and seven at 15. Wants to throw, looking left, throws left and throws high, incomplete. It'll be third down and seven. And you wonder, actually, did why they're throwing the ball. I was going to say, this did us a favor right there, maybe. Yeah, that, that, that is a good uh, good question that you might want to ask. I mean, they don't throw the ball too often. And in that case right there, they threw the ball when you're in the red zone. So here we go. they got to get down to the Blazers. Six-yard line, seven-yard line for the first down. Blazer crowd making some noise down there on the field. They're going to go shotgun this time. Wants to throw, look at pressure, throws, got a man in, he's hit. Good tackle from Valdosta State that time. Chris Gaspari 
But the pressure from the outside, I think it was uh, Tyler Josie. Tyler Josie came in and caused it, uh, but there's that helmet rule, guys. He had to come off. Absolutely. I was just about to say that, Tom. The bad part about that play is that his helmet came off. He needs to tighten that up, uh, getting laced up. But it was a great tackle by him to get out there in the open field and save a, a possible touchdown. And they're going to try the field goal. It'll be from the 25 from the right hash mark going towards the right side of your radio. I don't have a clue because I don't have any numbers on what this kicker has done. Snap. Wait for that. There's the snap. There's the kick. And good. It snuck through there somehow. Line drive. We're 7 to 3. Blazers going to send Theseus Jackson in to return on this time. He'll be on the far side. Matt Pierce, of course, in the middle. And Quinn Robertson here on the near side. So you've got three guys back there that all three can't take a distance. Here's the kick. It's going to go to Matt Pierce at the 4, the 15. Matt at the 20. Matt's got a hold. There's a hold. It's going to come back. He's at the 50, at the 40, the 30. Cuts back against the green. This is all for not, I believe. He's going to be tripped up, take it the distance, but there's a flag at the 30-yard line and bring it back. Tom, you're right there. I'm right on it. I mean, it's uh, it's you just can't do it right absolutely in front of the official. And uh, beautiful run, you guys. Beautiful run. Absolutely. That was a great run uh, <laughs> by Matt. But I know he's tired. He said, come on, guys. we got to bring it back. But I tell you what, that is a call that you have to call as an official. Like you said, Tom, when you're right there in front of the official, you can't make those type of plays. But one good thing about it is that we know what we can do and get Matt Pierce down the field and, and possibly score some uh, touchdowns for us. So there's a, another penalty, which is deja vu again. If you look back a week ago, so it moves it back to the 20-yard line instead of about an 80, well, right at 90-yard touchdown on the kick return, but it all goes for not. Blazers bring a receiver, Chris Anderson, going to go to the far side with three other guys. Caden drove us a distance the last time. Blazers lead it 7-3. to three. Going to give it off the right side. Austin has a good run, picks up about eight yards on the not about. He gets eight yards on the play off the right side of the offensive line. And so the Blazers lead it 7-3 to three with four minutes and 29 seconds. Clock's running here in the first quarter with the 7-3 to three lead but a very impressive first drive for the guys from Jacksonville, Edward Waters. Blazers second and two. Austin Scott is the lone running back on the right-hand side of the left-handed quarterback. Came wants to throw this time. Looking, looking, forced out of the pocket. Looking, throws, got a man, catches made there. First down for the Blazers. It's a 40, or five, the 40. Still on his feet down in their turret, the 34-yard line. What a nice catch there on a high throw, and that's number 83 for the Blazers, Cliff, Cliff Pettiford. Wait a minute, Dick. You sure it was 83? Uh, yeah, I, I think it was little 23 that did it. Was it 23? I was getting to make a say. I mean, I couldn't believe he get that high. I think it was did 23. You, did you see it, Charles? Was it 23? I, I, I guess it was 23. I didn't really get to see the number that yeah. well as well. Uh, he, went, he went about max height to catch that ball. First and 10 for the Blazers at the 34-yard line. Going to give it inside also. He's got some room. Good run to 25, the 20, the 15, all the way down to the 11-yard line. Austin Scott with another big run. Guys, he's pretty to watch from the back now. I'm telling you, I've seen him out here. He makes some kind of cuts. Looking at these first three drives, you get the feeling there may be some points on the board tonight unless somebody can make some oh, yeah, big adjustments. Absolutely. Timeout on the field, Edward Waters. Timeout. Edward Waters with the timeout. And by the way, Charles, uh, Tom, it was 83 Pettiford on the catch down there on the catch and run. Well, guys, I'm old and blind. <laughs> Blazers have it first and 10 down at the 10. Give it to Scott at the 10, crosses the 10, still fights and gets yardage down to about the 7. You know, he just turns pretty much nothing. You know, they had him right there at the 10, picked up about three or four yards on the play to be second down. Hey, Dick, real quick, I got some base defense guys down. One of them is going to tell you where, they, where they're from. Senior Airman Jonathan Royce from Methodist, Tennessee. 
Thank you very much. We'll get to the other ones in just a minute. But these are with the base defense group out at Moody, the ones that uh, carry the guns, Dick. So oh, thank you for the service. Second and seven into the lineup for Valdosta State will be Reggie Lewis. They're going to split him out. Going to go empty backfield. The Blazers are at the A7. We'll get a first down at the one. Caden back there by himself. Quarterback draw, Caden at the five. Caden dives, touchdown Valdosta. No, they're going to mark him at the half yard line. Say his knee went down at the half yard line. Still get us a first down, though, won't it, guys? It should be a first down. Number 11, Caden Cochran with the keeper. 238 clocks running. First and goal for Valdosta State, leading seven to three with 238 to go in the first quarter. All right, Dick, here's another one of these guys. See Aaron Adam Harrison from North Carolina, and we'll say hi, Mom. Okay, that's another one. <laughs> Laser's going to go big back in there with Austin Scott. Trent McGuire, a fullback, just off to the right side. Caden's going to quarterback sneak it and touchdown Valdosta State to make it 13 to 3. I tell you what, you get a little bit worried when you see your quarterback getting in there like that. Uh, we, we get worried when we see him try to run and things of that nature. But his lineman will protect him down there. Uh, we've seen him a little injured during the year. We don't want any of that to happen, especially on the run that we need to take uh, for the next six games. Daniel Anderson in to kick it. Also Justin Roberts in to hold it for Valdosta State. And Charles Morton will be the snapper. This make a 14 to three with 217 to go in the first quarter. Board snap, hold good. Kick good. is also good. Lasers with two good drives back to back. 217 to go in the first quarter, leading 14 to three. Now the defense, see if we can get a stop. Both teams have scored on the first possessions and the Blazers on their second. There's a kick return at the 20. Big hole at the 30. And, and the kicker saved a touchdown. So the Valdosta State special teams, we haven't seen much of that this year, Charles, but a good play there by the kicker, Jake Walker, or that was a touchdown. I'll tell you what, we better be glad that our kicker back there actually stopped that because he found a hole, and it was a freshman as a kicker, and Jake has been in there all year, and he's starting to learn a little bit more. He showed his speed on that one and showed his tackles. I'm, I'm sure he's going to get kudos from the sideline. But our special teams better make sure that doesn't happen again. First and 10 at their own 41 yard line, but great field position to start. Here comes that dangerous offense, and uh, Terman has done a great job of running it. Blazers need to stop them, slow them down. And there's a whistle on the far side of the line, Judge, and that's probably an illegal procedure, more than likely, and it was. That's going to cost him five, make it fifth, first and 15. All right, Charles, here's the, here's the last guy right here. Senior Evan Day Rodriguez from New York, Airborne. <laughs> okay. They said to tell y'all thank you for your remarks about appreciate them uh, serving our country. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're like, they're excited. But talking to these guys is like Dick, you and I talking to our kids. I mean, they just, <laughs> these guys, they look young. Well, tell them I was in the Air Force before they were born. So. Uh, Dick said to tell you he was in the Air Force before any three of y'all were born up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> they got one back, as they always do. They put that little guy in motion. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to be hit. The Lasers finally hit him in the backfield, and he's going to be tackled for a loss there. The initial hit was by Valdosta State's linebacker, Ryan Smith. And they penetrated that time and lost a couple of yards on the play. Here's a quick update, Dick. Uh, to start the second quarter, West Georgia and West Alabama are tied at seven. Uh, that's, a, that's a game that, we, of course, a lot of us are going to pay attention to. So West Georgia, West Al tied at seven to start the second quarter. Here they come on second and 16 back at the 35-yard line. They're back in the shotgun this time. They move, and that's going to cost them five more. Big They're, number 74 just stood straight up before the ball was snapped. Their offensive linemen are showing that's about the third or maybe the third illegal procedure that we've seen, we think. It will be a false start, and that'll move it back five more yards, make it sec at second and 21. And the clock uh, is continuing to run. Now they stopped it there. Looks like they're going to add some more time on the clock. Here's the So now moves it back to their own 30. Got to get it down to the, they say move, change the clock back to 119. I thought it was running when they should have, uh, it should have been stopped and he's trying to get it moved back. There we go. Blazer defense finally able to get in there and penetrate and make the stop before the quarterback who has looked very good, Brandon Terman. 
He's back in the shotgun again. Lasers remain forward. And that's, a, that's another penalty on the Absolutely. center. That's a false snap there, Tom. I'll tell you what. It looked like it. During our pregame, uh, the, uh, the tailgate show, Ed Hooper, of course, that does it with myself down there, he was talking about last year how they got a lot of penalties and start moving backwards. This is a reminiscence of that. I mean, you start to see where they started at the 41-yard line, and they're all the way, now they're all the way back to, I believe, their 25-yard line. There's a timeout on the field. Excuse me, I didn't see that because I was. Yeah, I was think it's going to be a, a pass interference on us. Uh, of course, we, uh, it looked like we were holding just a little bit before the ball got there. Let's see what the call is. Tom, did you catch it? I was uh, having some equipment problems here and didn't see that. Automatic first down, though. Boy, what a huge break there for Edward Waters. Blazers had him third way back not only that but we had an interception on that play uh, we had an interception and about to take it to the house to score the third touchdown of the quarter so here comes Edward Waters now back here at better field position their own 37 yard line first and 10 Blazers lead a 14 to 3 inside a minute to go in the first quarter and off inside, and pitch, and the ball's on the ground. The Blazers can pick it up, and they do have the football if it's a backwards lateral. That absolutely was and a backwards lateral. I think lateral. it was. Couldn't see from here, guys, but it looked like it was back. It is. Whenever you pitch the ball backwards like that, it's a backwards lateral. You, you see the lineman over there on the other side actually put his fist backwards to say it was a backwards pass. That is, uh, you know, that's a great play and a great nose for the ball as the defense from Austin State uh, went over there, grabbed the ball up. So the Blazers with the first turnover of the night back recovered at the 20. Justin Williams from Valdosta, the linebacker, I think, on the recovery there. Yep, yep. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Big turnover for the Blazers to get there on that drive. So I tell you what, it looks like we're going to have a quick one here. Uh, Katie Carker has all his receivers Cade out. Cade wants to throw, looking, looking, throw, wants to throw, and he's forced out of the pocket. He's got a lot of room to run if he wants to, and he throws, catches made, and then he's drilled at the 15, but a good pass and a good hold on there for Valdosta State's number 82, I believe, 83, and that's Pettiford who made the good catch earlier. Boy, he was drilled there, Tom. Uh, Dick, we're walking back down here, and uh, and I saw, I saw the lick, but we still uh, first down on... Uh, but on the 15 yard line. Yeah, everybody always says it doesn't matter what the lick is. As long as you catch the ball, you get the yardage, and it's a first down, we're going to keep the football moving. Inside 25 seconds to go in the first quarter, 14 to 3, the Blazers lead it. Shontavious Jones goes in four uh, out in the flats and incomplete. And that was a backwards pass as well. Glad that, that one went, went out. out of bounds. Glad that one went out. It went back. And I think you were saying that, Charles. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. I, I, I was just saying the same thing that you were you were saying. I'm glad that was a backwards pass as well. I'm glad it went out of bounds. At the 20, 21 yard line, 14 seconds to go. It's been a strange uh, last few minutes of this game with the penalties, uh, with the backward lateral. The Blazers recovered, and then we throw a pass that was a backward pass that goes out of bounds. But the Blazers lose about six yards on that play, so it's second and 16. May get one more playoff here before the quarter ends. If we bring a guy in motion, going to run it with uh, Reggie, I believe. He cuts inside, has a hole. Reggie at the 15, Reggie at the 10. Touchdown, Reginald Lewis. What a great run. Brought him in motion, handed it off to him. He takes it in to give the Blazers a 20 to 3 lead. Boy, what kind of moves he put from down here, guys. I'll tell you what, that was a great cutback. And, uh, absolutely, Tom. I'm sure you've seen it down there. We've seen it up here. It was a great cutback by Reginald Lewis. I like the way that Velocity State's playing right now. We're playing with momentum. We're putting our foot on the gas, and, and we're, we're driving ahead. This is what we need to get us through the next couple of games that we have here. That was the final play of the first half. We'll get the extra point here to try to make it 21 to 3. Snaps good, holds good. Kick is good, good, 21 to 3.
Good kick back to the one yard line. He's at the far side of the field to 15 to 20 and is hit as he crosses the 25 to the 26 yard line. First and 10 for Edward Waters. I'll tell you what, this is uh, this game right here is going to give us the momentum that we need uh, to get us through. Uh, that first quarter was great. I mean, we, we had the momentum. We we did everything we wanted to do. We made the defense uh, commit. We ran whatever play we wanted to. If we do that the rest of the game, I tell you what, this game is going to be uh, a, a great game for Valencia State to start off, to make the statement, to say just those two games we lost, that doesn't mean anything uh, for, the, for this team in Valencia State. So here comes Terman out with one back. He's going to go under center. This is when they're really effective with this option offense. Inside handoff, picks up good yardage, breaks a tackle, and he's crossed the 40 down to about to 43. The Blazers continue, Tom, to have problems tackling the foot. We, we, we can't, Dick, and... I'm sitting here just staring at it, and I'm going, what is the deal? The, the, the problem I just had is that everybody on Valdosta State had an arm on that running back. Everybody touched the running back. We just didn't wrap up and actually get him to the ground. It's not like we're not getting a hold of him. We're getting a hold of him. We have to take him to the ground. 21-3, to three, they're at their own 42-yard line, but a good run on first, first down. Going to run it off the right side. Quarterback's going to... No, a good defense that time from Valdosta State. I thought I had it right there to start back, and the tackle was made by Justin Williams. Tyler Josie in there to help out. And, of course, Justin's a sophomore linebacker, played at Valdosta High School. It's, they actually, they're going to give him pretty much a line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Clock's running, 14.05 to go. First half, Valdosta State 21, and Edward Waters 3. Blazers, they had a great first drive. The second drive, the Blazers just wiped it up with a fumble recovery and then scored a touchdown. They have a big play on their first down, a good defensive play from the Blazers on second, on uh, on this down right here. They got a man in motion. Quarterback hands it off inside, and the uh, Blazers stuffed that one pretty well, too. He got to the 45-yard line, gained four. Lawrence two. Virgil in there, guys. I'll tell you what, Philip Teamer, uh, the number two, the running back, he's a senior for this Edward Waters team. He just put his head down, ran straight forward, and ran right into Lawrence and Virgil. I tell you what, Lawrence wasn't moving, got him right to the ground. That's the type of defense we need. And now it's third and seven. Third and seven, Valdosta State leads at 21 to three. Edward Waters has the football at their own 45 yard line, going from right to left. One back, as they always do. We shift the line a little bit. He drops back, rolls out, wants to throw. Got a man out there. Catches made wide open for the first down. And on the tackle over there for Valdosta State's Chaz Matthews, but they get it all the way down to Valdosta State's 43-yard line. Tom and Dick, just seems like the couple of pass plays that this Edward Warriors team is throwing. They're starting to give receivers wide open. Um, we, we, I guess we are so used to them running. We're so... Uh, we're thinking about them running so much. We're starting to lose track of the wide receivers out there. We got to get a hold of that. We came, get, leave them wide open, and let them get first downs because that's how they gain momentum. Clock at 12 and a half minutes to go. Quarterback under center again. Drops back, wants to throw again. Looking downfield, got a man wide open. Catch is made. There's a flag, and that's probably going to cost Valdosta State some more yardage there, Tom. Don't know if it was holding or roughing the passer. Well, let's see. Number 13, Brandon Herman's pass is complete. I got a, yeah, roughing the, the roughing the passer. So they got a big play, and they're down now. They'll be inside the Blazer 10-yard line. So it's just like the first drive there, Charles. They played mistake-free, and they've just they've eaten about Austin State's defense up on this series. We cannot make mistakes like that. And like I said before, I just talked about it before that play happened. We're so used to this team running. We're leaving the receivers open. This team can throw. It's just that they don't throw a lot. And we're leaving receivers wide open. We can't do that. They're gaining a lot of yardage. And then we do a personal foul, which gets them down within a 10-yard line. We, we, we can't do that. Clock's inside. Uh, be right at 12 minutes on this snap. Blazers lead it 21 to 3. But uh, they've got it first and goal at the 10-yard line. Under center again. Teamer is the running back. Inside handoff, and there's a flag. That might be a, a hold there, possibly, Tom, or something, because there's two flags on the field, one from the referee, one from the line judge. Let's see. Dick, I'll tell you what. I, uh, Illegal shift, and that'll cost him five instead of a touchdown. But uh, they're just moving at will on the Blazer defense at this point. 
Yeah, lose it back to the 15. Problem there is though they're moving. I mean they're moving it well, and uh, but we can't. We've got to get out of this penalty mode, guys. That just kill us. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, when I mean that was on them. That was a five yarder against them. Illegal shift. 11:40. Clock's running. Back at the 15 yard line. It's still first and goal from the 15. Blazers looking for a stop. Quarterback keeps, tosses, drops the football. Blazers pick it up. I think we have the fumble recovery. We got it. And the Blazers recover their second <laughs> fumble on their last two drives. I, I tell you what, if I'm the if I'm the offense and, and I see number two for Edward Ward is going off saying, why are we doing the backwards pass? The backwards pass has killed this team the last two times. They've been a little bit deep into our end zone. That, that play right there, a backwards pass, and the, the, the runner actually bobbles the ball and it drops to the ground, and Valasa State picks it up. Great defense by Valasa State. I believe that was Lawrence Virgil possibly on the fumble recovery. You're correct, I think, Dick. It's at the 16-yard line. Blazers stop the drive there, get their second turnover of the night. Two receivers each side of the field, where they're stacked back there on top of it, your eye formation type as a receiver. Came with one back back there. Going to give it inside handoff to O'Neill. He's at the 20 and gets to the 25 yard line. Cedric O'Neill, another good inside Cedric run there, picks up. The it looks like hardly anything. He picked up nine yards. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but Theseus Jackson was in there, wide receiver uh, this time. And, and, and Dick, you were asking him how come he's not playing a lot. He's actually out there, wide receiver, uh, right now for uh, Valasa State. But don't be surprised, Dick, if they give the ball to him. So he. Thesis is lined up out there, three of them on the far side, one on the near side, second and a yard for Valdosta State. O'Neill again, as their Caden's got the football, he has the first down, he breaks in the clear at the 50, Caden it's at 40, the 35, the 25, they run him down at the 15 yard line. Caden takes it from the 25 all the way down to the 15 yard line. And Caden looked like he was running for his life down at, uh, down the midfield. He looked like a track star just a little bit. He ran out of gas uh, right there about the 19 or uh, the 21 yard line. Great run by Caden Cochran and for his uh, offensive line to keep those guys off of him. 10.36 to go in the quarter. Blazers trying to put another touchdown on the board. First and 10 at the uh, 16 yard line. Real tight formation except for one receiver way out there by himself in single coverage. O'Neill off the left side, inside at the 10, avoids another tackle, get down to about the eight yard line. The is given to number seven, There's a flag comes yeah, in. Yeah, that came in, it came in late, Dick. And, and I think boy. it's on number eight for them, Bedford Balfour. Uh, absolutely, that was a, a late shove to the face by uh, number eight uh, for Edward Waters. Down. And it, it makes us a uh, great penalty by them because it pushes us further into the red, red zone for us and we can possibly score a touchdown here. And I tell you, Dick, what we don't want to see is anything turn into anything like we saw last time. Uh, I mean, we, we go up and score here, then I just hope they don't, I hope it doesn't get real personal. Offsetting penalties here is what we got. Number eight is getting a little angry with his uh, coaching staff. He doesn't want to come off the field for Edward Waters. Well, that's it. That's what they didn't have the last time here. Uh, the coach uh, got him off the field, and that's a, a good sign. So it's first, uh, second down about three. 10 minutes inside, 10 minutes on this snap. Cedric O'Neill, the lone back with Caden Cochran. Cedric with it and tries to break a tackle. He does. He cuts back outside. He's going to lose some yardage here this time, though. He lost about three or about three, and there's a flag down at the six. More than likely a hold, you would think. Sometimes you, you charge. You just take what you can get. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, second and three there, second. Holding offense, number 28. I just, Ten yard penalty I, I just don't foul. understand. If we're doing it, if we're doing it, and it's obvious, I guess, but, boy, we get holding penalties called on us. Well, here's the one thing. Either, either uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about it last week and it's saying the holding penalties. Now, I don't think two referee crews come in just wanting to call holds, so we have to fix that ourselves. Uh, we have to figure out what's going on. Now this kind of give you, uh, you know, the inside look if you're the coaching staff of our state, say we have to fix that. Clock's running 9.48. It's second down and 10.15 uh, for the Blazers. Whole bunch of receivers stacked tight. Reggie Lewis out here by himself in single coverage. 
on the home side of the field. Now he's cutting across the field. K wants to throw, goes down to the corner of the end zone. Almost caught there by number 83 for the Blazers. Chris Cliff Pettiford went off his fingertips. I think the last holding call, though, you have to put on that. The, the, the play was there too long. Uh -huh. When you got your guy, he's trying to, to help out a little bit. But you can't continue to, to block and block and block. You're normally going to get a hold a lot of times because, you know, a running back went inside and came back out and yeah, tried to go yeah. to the sides. So that's a whole bunch of time. You're trying to get your offensive line to, to, to keep you safe for so such a long time like you did say. Eventually it's going to come out to a hold. Now here's a third down for players. Got to get it all the way down to the six. Keep the drive. Reggie Lewis is going to go motion set on the far side over there. Caden wants to throw the screen to him, and he does, and we're not going to get the first down. We're going to be able to kick a field goal here probably. So not what the Blazers wanted, but the field goal will put Valdosta State up by three touchdowns. Look like we might go for it. See, uh, see what coach and he's sending the field goal team out there. Charles, let me tell you something. Over the, during the week, I've had some people you know, call me to the side and say, hey, you know, I can't believe it. So we got all these holding penalties. He's like the coaches. Well, let me tell you, we got five-year seniors out there. Yep. I mean, they know what holding is. Yep. <laughs> That's absolutely right, Tom. You can't blame it on the coaching staff all the time. This will be a 30-yard field goal for Daniel Anderson. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is also good. From here, good. 24 to 3. Blazers have to settle for three that time, making a three touchdown 24 to 21 or 24 to three lead with 841 to go in the first half. And for the Blazers, Jake Walker kick it off. He saved a touchdown a while ago. Good bouncing kick and is finally picked up at the 10. Just missing back there. He's trying to cut back against the green. Then he's going to go down by a host of Valdosta State players. There's nine Valdosta State black shirts over there. Too many to call, so you got there first. First and 10 at their own 22. Guys, did he miss that ball or was he trying to do that? I can't believe he tried that. I think he missed that ball. Uh, I do too. I think he did. I don't know. Maybe the last return, you know, they've had, a, I think, a couple of decent returns on the Blazers. First and 10, Edward Waters from their own 22-yard uh, line. Blazers lead at 24-3 with 8.33 to go in the first half. Brandon Turman, the quarterback, I like him. He's been very effective. Keeps it, wants to cut back, and the Blazers pick him up. He still gets about right at four again. Yeah, absolutely. The Blazers are starting to stay home a little bit more and stay safe. Uh, but, you know, uh, they, they seem like they do that a lot. They actually uh, run the ball, run the ball, and then try to throw the pass because we forget about the pass every now and then. Guys, simple math. You get you get four yards, three downs. Guess what? <laughs> you move into chains. Absolutely. Across the 25, 26 yard line. Clock will be inside eight minutes on the snap here. They're under center more than you see in college football anymore. He drops back, rolling out towards the home side, wants to throw, stops, throws downfield. Oh, almost intercepted there from Valdosta State. Dominique Wheeler, and he might have taken it the distance. It was a little high, but uh, had some juice on that pass. Well, Ryan Smith, I'm proud of Ryan Smith. Ryan came in there and had an opportunity to probably get a flag thrown. and. Uh, kind of bumped the quarterback, but then offered his hand to pick him up when the play was over. I was just looking at that as well, Tom. I think that's what saved the flag from actually exactly. being thrown. Exactly. Third down. Here's a big third and six for both teams. Blazers want to keep the momentum offensively on their side. Blazers have not punted the football tonight, I don't believe. I think you're right. Tell you the truth, I think the Blazers have not. Here he wants to throw. He's looking downfield. We're forcing him out of the pocket from behind. Don't get him there, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Good play from Valdosta State. 34. That was Chris Pope who chased him down, and good speed from Chris, and that'll force him to punt the football. And this will be their first punt of the night. I tell you what, and boy, how fast is Chris Pope to get around there and get to the backfield? I mean, he came out there running and running hard to get to that quarterback. Came from the backside to the other side and still tripped him up. Yeah, and we need a chance for Quinn Robertson maybe to get the good punt return. We got 10 on the line of scrimmage there. And there's a hold, it looked like, but no call. Quinn's going to let it bounce and just get away from it. I don't think he's going to try. He thought about it just briefly. Just Boy, briefly, he thought, about it. he thought about it. I'm telling you, he thought about it. 
Those punt returners, they hate to let the ball roll on the ground. Yeah, they never want to let the ball just roll on the ground because, you know, you don't get too many opportunities to get out there and get the ball. Uh, they want to run it back every chance they get, but that one was safe uh, to, to let go. Seven minutes and two seconds to go in the uh, first half. The Blazers lead at 24 to 3. And uh, we'll have it first and 10 from our own 27 yard line. Blazers have scored every possession, I believe. That's yeah. correct, with three touchdowns and one field goal. Absolutely, you're absolutely correct. We scored every time we got downfield. Going to empty the backfield, five receivers, three on this near side, which is the home side of the field, two on the far side. Blazers again going from left to right as you stare over at your radio. Caden back there wants to throw. Got Quinn coming across. No, now we got man and Pettiford almost had it out of his hands. Probably should have made the catch, Tom. I don't know how close you were. I'm, I'm right on top of it, Dick, and I'm going to tell you, you've got, you got to make those catches. I tell you what, if you're Katie Cochran, the fun part about this is that you have a lot of options and you got a lot of time to choose those options. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be an interesting night to see what Katie Cochran can do. I still find it interesting. Of course, the big, there's a big guy over there covering him, Kevin Hutchins. It, it, and Sean Tavis has just been not in many games this year as far as receiving a football. Going to run it inside. Austin gets across the 30 to about the 31 yard line they're going to give him. So it'll be a third down for Valdosta State. We'll say six. We'll say seven. Clock's running 640. It just, like I say, Sean Tavis has had a couple early pretty good games, but he's been pretty quiet. And, and I, it, just, it just looks like the matchup, he would be the guy to go to. You would think so. I mean, uh, absolutely, because of his height on everybody else, you would think that would be the matchup that you want to choose. This is the biggest guy I think this year that's covered him. He's 6-1 over there, Kevin Hutchins. Right, we're going to send three to the far side, one on the near side. Caden okay, looking to throw this time. Throws out in the flat and incomplete. Thought there might have been a little shove, but it, it was not going to happen there. It was not going to be caught. And tried to hit uh, Reggie Lewis over there on the Blazers sideline. Blazers had to punt the football for the first time tonight. I'll tell you what, Tom and Dick, did you see that right there? I mean, I don't think once Katie Carpenter looked to the other side yeah. of the field where we had three of our receivers. He kind of never uh, stared never down at the receivers on this side. So the first punt of the night for Valdosta State, leading 24 to 3 with 6.10 to go in the first half. Not a good, that's a pure shank. Uh, did he get shanked? Did that guy get a little hand on it? Nah, I think he shanked it. Yeah, it was off the side of his foot. It was a shank. Uh, that was a great call. The number 11 for Edward Waters did get close to that, Cameron Mitchell, but he didn't touch that ball at all. It was just a shank off the foot of Valasa State punter. And they'll get a first and 10 in their own territory to 44 yard line. That probably was a, I don't know what I'm saying, maybe a 15 yard punt, 20. He knew it right as soon as he kicked it, too. Uh, you know, that's one of the kicks that you wish to take back, but he gives us great punts at every time uh, that he gets out there. 13 yard punt, as the SID Sean Reed tells us. Brandon Turner brings them out. Blazers have stopped them uh, ever since they had that big first drive, but they have had two turnovers that cost them. Quarterback Keeps wants to throw. Forced out of the pocket. He's got some room now. Going to have to run him down. And he crosses the four, all the way down to about the 35, 33. They're going to give him almost, well, they're going to give him the 32. That's a quick quarterback. He can run. You're not hearing up here? Man. There's a little lady standing in here. Rather, that guy ran right at her to try to protect himself. And we, we came in and absolutely tackled her. She's a trooper. You mean to tell me you didn't jump in there to save her, Tom? No, actually I didn't. I didn't know it until I saw her come flying by me. Oh, okay. First and 10 at the 32 yard line. Thurman under center. They put that guy in motion every single time. He keeps it. He's gonna be stopped in the backfield. Good play from Valos to State. That's 41, Justin Williams again. The the sophomore from Valdosta High School, he's shown signs this year of being a good player for us. Absolutely, I think he has a fumble recovery and also he stayed home on that one right there and didn't let the quarterback fool him for a, a great uh, loss of downs. I mean, not a loss of downs, loss of yards on the play. It'll be second and 12, clock's running, five minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Valdosta State leads it 24 to three. Blazers def uh, wanted the football to start the game and scored a touchdown, so they will kick off to start the second half. Coach Dino will stop for a brief comment to Tom Odom. 
Wants to throw this time, looking downfield. Got a man wide open. And that's a touchdown for Edward Rogers. Just, there's nobody within 25 yards of him, that's, I'm guessing. That's the one thing I was talking about over and over again, that we get so used to them running the ball that we forget that they still can throw the ball. And that was a result of us forgetting that they can throw the ball. Safeties, cornerbacks didn't even run with the guy. Thought he was dead in the waters. And this can make it a 24 to 10 football game with 4.51 to go in the first half. Snaps there, holds there, kick is, it is good, 24 to 10. Well, the Blazers give up a long touchdown pass. Make it 24 to 10 here. This is uh, kind of same as that, I think it was long coverage. Absolutely, it was a blown coverage, and it, it's something that you know you have to watch out for. You can't just go in this game and think that you're going to blow this team out because they still want to fight. They know what happened the last time they were here. We got to go ahead and protect that. Got to protect it. Matt Pierce returned the last one for a touchdown, but unfortunately a holding call calls South Austin State. So here's the kick again. They're not going to take a chance this time. It's going to bounce to Quinn Rawson at the 15, Quinn at the 20, give it out the 23 yard line. A little scuffle there between some players and just, I know it's an emotional game, but you just you have to learn to back away from that stuff. It's not a time to be macho, Charles. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that that's a it's an emotional game. It's a game that you want to win. Both teams want to win. So you know you're gonna get, you know, a little bit into it, but you gotta be smart in that. You gotta stay out of that because you don't wanna be missing the game because you got to a team that's not going to make it in your division or in your conference, I should say. Cedric O'Neill, the lone running back. Blazers lead it 24 to 10. Got plenty of time to try to put some more points on the board. Starting at our own 28-yard line. He's going to give it off the left side. O'Neill, he's got some room to 35, the 40, 45, it's the 50, the 45, the and 40. They run him out of bounds. No flags yes, on the Yes, it play. is a flag. It's a flag. I didn't tell you. And uh, guess what it's going to be? Yeah, absolutely, a hole. Using one of the referee oh, throws it, it's going to be a hole. i tell you what, there's two things that have already happened tonight, and I'm being calm, but the hold the penalties, the holding penalty, and guys, if you remember, second off, last week and tonight, we have had men wide open on blown coverage. Absolutely. I, I think that a lot of people are seeing on tape right down the middle, and Tom, you can correct me, Dick, you can correct me as well, but a lot a lot of what we're seeing is they're, they're splitting that tight end off. They're sending them right down the middle of the field, and then they're sending the wide receiver down. They're doing the run play, run play, run play, and then throwing it down the field. This is something we got to work on. Second or first down and 20. Got to go with O'Neill this time. He's still on his feet. Gets across 25 to the 26-yard line. Picks up about seven or eight on that play. And he's pretty wide, guys. Both of these young backs are pretty to watch, but... Uh... I'm still thinking about something. Absolutely. Tom, just to let you know down there, and Dick as well, I've, I've just been told that bad weather is, is, is supposed to be coming in this area. Hopefully it stays away. Uh, but they say that the bad weather should should be coming into this area here soon. Inside four minutes to go. First half, Blazers lead at 24 to 10. Penalties again have been a, a hurt for us tonight. Second and 12. Caden wants to throw this time. Looking plenty of time. Wide open downfield. Reggie Lewis at the 45. Reggie comes back at the 30. Still on his feet. At the, said he went down. He thought he didn't, but they're going to give him the 30 yard line. He was wide open over there. Yeah, absolutely. Reggie Lewis is fast enough to beat that guy. I think he uh, he yeah. tried to get too much and come back inside. If he would just stayed on the outside and tried to beat him by speed, Reggie Lewis would have beat him. Reggie Lewis is. Uh, I think that's becoming a, a really important part of this offense, especially with Gerald out. He's been an important part. Great speed. He runs the Wildcat horse. First and 10, three minutes and 15 seconds to go. Caden's going to throw the middle. Reggie again. And he's not going to break this time, but he gets up five or gets us five yards, though. Clock will be inside three minutes on the snap. Lasers 24. Edward Waters. Pick up five I tell you what, both offenses are playing well tonight. Uh, out defense, you know, you, you you have some questions about the wide open men and things of the nature. The front half of our defense is playing well, but we have to contain uh, in the secondary on our defense. 
And inside O'Neill, he wants to come outside and break a tackle. He does, and basically he gets back to, to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and five. That's one of those plays right there, Tom, where you were saying how you try to get too much. You know, you, you try to do a little bit too much on that play, and uh, you end up losing a little bit more yardage than you would have gained if you were ran straight ahead. Clock's running, 2.20. First half, Valdez State 24 to 10 with the lead. Be nice to get some more points up on the board, but they need to pick up the first down at the 20. Got to get five yards here going towards the east end zone, the right side of your radio. Visualize. Cade wants to throw this time. He will throw. Reggie breaks the tackle. He's at the 20. The 15 gets the first down at around the 12 yard line. Reggie Lewis has been the go to guy tonight. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I could feel the weather coming in. <laughs> I mean, I can just, I can tell something's near. They're moving the clock inside two minutes to go. Plenty of time. Blazers have uh, three timeouts. Three receivers go far side. Quinn Robertson on by himself over here on this near side of the field. Caden's going to throw for it. Got a man on the middle. Touchdown. What a throw. What a catch from Stretch. Stretch. When John Tavius Jones, a beautiful throw. Great coverage, too, Tom. That's a great pass, great catch, and that's what we want to see. We just work on these penalties and uh, kind of get our read straight on defense, guys. I'll tell you what, Kata Carker, that is the needle right there on that play. He threw a bullet right into a uh, stretch, and, and he caught the pass and, and got a little bit of it. It was a small window of opportunity, and Kata Carker found it. Just to make it 31. To 10 with minute 36 to go in the first half and it's good blazers lead 31 to 10 to 36 to go and charles got us some scores uh 21 nothing uh north out of half time over georgia oh west georgia actually. over shorter i'm sorry i'm trying to get the scores here 21 nothing <laughs> West georgia over shorter uh, west georgia over west alabama 17 14 uh, here with the scores. I'm trying to get the updates from my great friend Ed Hooper right here. A little bit of confusion going on, but well, we got him. We got him I right. was going to tell you what you said was right, Charles. You are trying to give the score. <laughs> Absolutely. I am trying to give the score. Couldn't but see it too good. Blazers will kick it off from the 50 yard line after they were assisted with a 15 yard penalty. He got that one. I kick. Five yards deep in the end zone. He's going to take a knee. I tell you what, uh, sorry about messing up that score just a little bit there. I'm, I'm just not uh, confused. I didn't know we were playing San Augustine. Oh, is that what you said? Here I, we I'm go. Lost. Here we go, Tom. What was West? What was the West Al West, West Georgia score? West Al West Georgia 17-14. Still playing, right? Yep, still playing. Second quarter. Minute 36 to go in the first half. Out off the state 31 10. Blazers have scored every possession with exception of one. And that was a shank punt, so we don't uh, it end up not hurting us, I don't believe. Maybe it did. The ball's on the ground, but the quarterback fell on it. Tried to hand it off. Truman did, and a little, little mishap there. And he was obviously he's, or thankful for him to fall on. They'd lost three yards on the play. Expecting some weather to head through here. We're not sure what, how bad that is supposed to be, if this could be some heavy rain or what. Clock's run and be inside one minute on this snap on second and 13. Blazers offensively have looked extremely well tonight. And off and nothing there Boy, that time. What a lick there. Who, who was that? That was number two. Well, I didn't see who made the tackle. Turner got the, uh, looks like Tevin Davis, he one of them in there. And I think also on the tackle, we have called his name Munchester, but I know he's playing well, and that's Lawrence Virgil. Yeah, I think it was, I, I think it might have been Chris Pope, uh, number 34, on that tackle right there. Of course, you know, he's one of the leader tackles for uh, for our team here. It looked like he was getting off his feet, scraping off the ground just a little bit. 30 seconds inside of that right now. They've got a third down 10. They probably don't want to do anything real silly, but they've had some great pass plays against the Blazers. Why not take a shot downfield? But they're going to run in, uh, inside. Nothing's going to happen there, and that might be the final play. They're going to get the football to start the second half, so probably they'll go into the locker room and uh, talk things over there. And Tom Odom's going to grab the head coach, get head coach David Dean going to the locker room, and we'll be back with some halftime stats. And Tom's got us a, a couple of United States Air Force members to talk to. 
And we're just let uh, I'll talk to Tom Grabs, Coach Dean going to the locker room. And it's a strange first half of Blazers early on could not stop them offensively. We'll talk more about this before the second half starts. But the Blazer offense has, has been equally as good. Here you go, Dick. You got it, Tom. Okay, Coach. Uh, you got your tangle up there. A couple of penalties, but uh, <laughs> Dick, uh, technical challenge down here with equipment. But a uh, few penalties, but playing well. <laughs> yeah, we are. We, we're killing ourselves again with penalties. And it's, that's frustrating. We got to do a better job of keeping our hands inside. Uh, and, and play into the whistle. One thing I am proud of is they're starting to take some cheap shots on us and we're walking away from it. So go and let's have a good half. Blazers lead at 31 to 10 at the half. On behalf of the College of the Arts and the Department of Music by Boston State University, we are pleased to present the more than 150 members of the 2012 by Boston State University Blazers Brigade Marching Band. For the team of half time entertainment, the Blazers Brigade presents 250 and beyond. Opening with a fanfare theme from the original motion picture series Superman, followed by Ron Hyatt's critically acclaimed Apollo 13 and the 2009 prequel from Star Trek Star Trek.
Made it 37 to 10, had the extra point blocked. There's a line drive kickoff's gonna bounce and return from four. 15, he falls to the ground, no whistle, they say he didn't hit the ground. Fumble! And there's a fumble, there's a flag. And the Blazers pick up the fumble, we lose it. Now they did it, it. they, they get fall it back. back on the ball. I wonder what the flag is. Uh, you got the white hat that threw the flag. They got the fumble, but there is a flag, and we'll wonder see. It, wonder if it was a block in the black, block in the back uh, by the receiving team. Uh, hard to imagine anything else. Some, play. Somebody had the football for the Blazers and lost it. Here's the call. That'll move it inside the five yard line. I would assume, since that's where the ball was finally recovered. So tough break time. You were right there amongst. Yeah, I mean that just uh, there again. Right, they didn't go away. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, Tom, uh, get on that goal line because here comes a safety. How about that? I understand that. Pretty close, huh? Dick, I'm gonna get a rain cut on y'all. Be back in about two minutes. They're gonna hit the way out to the far side. Here's our quarterback is he's running back to the end zone. They just have him pinned back back here, so. They're going to hand just a straight hand off. He breaks clear at the, in the 15 and gets all the way out to the 24-yard line. Chris Kaspari possibly saved a touchdown on the team. It's a straight ahead handoff and uh, maybe caught Blazers by surprise a little bit. That was my fear right there because we signed the, signed the linebacker out for the third wide receiver on the left-hand side. We took the safety, Chris, uh, and put him on that third wide receiver, which left one safety back there, and he was – the, the, the field was wide open with if he would be the last safety back there, and it almost happened. So they get it all the way out. They jump again. That's going to cost him five. That's about their fifth procedure penalty tonight. And that'll move it back to the uh, 24-19 yard lines. 11-14 to go in the third quarter. Blazers 37-10 lead over Edward Waters. They, it's almost the same formation each time they put a guy on the wing and they put one of them in motion for the toss possibly from the quarterback. And there goes one, and off is inside. Now the quarterback keeps it, and he's going to go down. As we have a light drizzle here at Big Ohio State. That was Kenny Murphy, a six foot, 244 pound freshman from Tattnall County up in Glenville. So nice play from the freshman right there. That was a great play. Uh, I tell you what, the defense for Ohio State, and along with the ponies that this team, Edward Waters, is putting on the hill, uh, is helping us a lot. I mean, we, we have them uh, second and long here, uh, close to the, you know, inside, out, you know, close to the, the, our, our red zone, I should say, their red zone, I should say. Um, here's a big play right here, though. Let's see what happens. Second and 16, 10 18 to go. Blazers lead 37 to 10. He wants to throw, forced him out of the pocket. He wants to throw. He's looking. He does throw. Intercepted. I thought I was to say. And he's going to take it back for a no, They're going to knock him down at the two-yard line. Alec Webster, Alec Webster threw it right to him. And you got a flag on the play by the camera Rio. So we have to watch see what this is. And it looks like he's going to go against Edward Morris. Probably a late hit. Roughing the pass. Roughing the pass from the defense. And so the dinner session, that's a... Uh, Two interceptions we've had tonight that have been taken away because of penalties. I didn't see it. Tom, you weren't down there, I don't think. No, I didn't see that part. I was watching the run back, and a uh, guy that came from out in to help trip him up. all that either. So another big mistake from Valdez State. I'll tell you what. I thought that the quarterback rolled out of pocket on that one. Uh, became a runner, uh, in my, my thought. But, you know, you referee through the flag, so I guess he's seen the box. Yeah, usually if you're running out of pocket, you're looking, but you're running too. Minutes to go in the third quarter. They get a big break. Let's just one more time. Well, that keeps it. He's going to be running out from behind. A good play for the State. And that's nice for the Blazers. Brandon Green, he's a sophomore. Got ball, Dick. We got all. And the Blazers get the fumble that time. And that's 44, I believe. Number four. And he comes up with it. So two big plays by the freshman. And a good play by 96 there to Brandon Green. So the Blazers get right back. Great way to stay with it for the Blazers. They with the play all the time. They didn't argue about, you know, the interception and the, the rough pass. They stayed in the game. I uh, got a turnover eventually at the end of it. Here's a first down for uh, Valdosta State. And Gra Graham Cray is in at quarterback for Valdosta State. He's done well in relief of Kate Cochran this year. So he's in there and also him with Cedric O'Neill right behind him. Neil bounces off a tackle trying to get to the corner. Dives for his flag comes in late. And if, if that's another hold, I'm just going to want to. <laughs> and it is. It is a hope. This is just getting unbelievably ridiculous, the hope calls. 
I tell you what, I mean, when it's so obvious it, it, and it's right for a referee, the umpire looks forward, uh, you know, he's staring down and we have to stop. I wish I could know uh, what side of the line is actually holding the most offices to hold line. I'm sure this is something that Coach David Dean and the, the officer coordinator will work on. Uh, just another another mistake on Valencia State, even though we got the big lead. I know the coaches just are getting tired of this problem. Fumble football. And we get it back. 22 to Monte Ridley. So laser just going flat backwards here. Well, I know it's a little bit of drizzle going on down there, a little rain. Uh, this, but this is the wrong direction that we want to go. Just because rain has come down, we still have to protect the ball. Uh, this still is a ball game. We still got nine minutes left in the third quarter, and we still got the whole fourth quarter to play. Don't get sloppy right now. We'll be inside eight minutes on this snap, or inside nine minutes on this snap. So Blazers had uh, 10, 20, 30 yards to go, 31 yards to go, a 50, and then a missed, missed off handoff and a running back. Second down, long, long jump. That guy didn't have to be able to fix up about four. Cedric O'Neill with the catch. It'll be third down. I know Coach Ean probably didn't even want to throw the ball anymore tonight, but uh, when you're facing second 20, you got to do something, or second 30. Got to get it all the way down to their 25-yard line to keep the drive going. Reminder again, we'll be on the road uh, probably next Friday for a 2 o'clock kickoff on Saturday against West Georgia up in Carrollton. West Georgia's a good football team. Second, a whole bunch to go. Wants to throw. Looking. Cedric... Neil drops out there in the flat, and plays are playing a little sloppy right now, so the Valencia State will punt the football. Guys, it goes back penalties. I'm sitting here just shaking my head. Penalties uh, have hurt us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's one thing that has hurt us. Uh, one thing we can't do is take our foot off the gas right now. I mean, we cannot let this team back in the game, and mostly on anything else. Dominic uh, Damasi is coming in to punt from Savannah, 6'4", 190, and a freshman played at Calvary Day. They got their turn person man back at 10. There's a snap. There's a snap. That's a very nice punt. Going to be returned. Now it's going to go into the end zone. Nice fake there by number five for them, Tony Goodman. But that's the first one of his career for Alaska State. Dominic Damasi, six foot four, 190 pound freshman. Dick, I started to tell you guys that he can absolutely move the ball. The biggest thing that they uh, had a problem with him was the getting getting the ball off, taking three steps until the quick two step. He's also a pitcher of Alaska State baseball team as well. Uh, that's what you might, you know, you might hear his name sometime this year uh, with Wallace State Blazers uh, baseball team. 7.56 to go in the third quarter. The Blazers lead at 37 to 10. They're going to go receivers each side of the field. They're in a shotgun with two backs, one on each side of the quarterback. Going to run it off the left side, and he's hit right there by Valdez to say 56. 56. Brandon White, a senior from Stone Mountain. Look like everybody on the Blazers are getting a little bit of action tonight. This is good for the team. I mean, everybody gets out there, get to get their helmet dirty, get to get the jersey dirty a little bit, and, uh, you know, make some plays happen because you never know who you might need at the end of the year. You know, Charles, and, uh, you know, we could try to get Ed in the game. You know, we like to let the younger guys get in the <laughs> <and> try <laughs> to get up, but he's busy doing his new <laughs> He says he still has the arm. No, I was talking about on the radio. <laughs> Here's second down and 10. Going to run it. And he's not going to get anywhere. 91 just smothers him. 91, a good play there from Doral White, his sophomore from Stevenson. And this guy's not going to get up in a hurry. I think he just fell on him. That was their good little running back, Philip Teamer, 5'9", 180, a senior. Yeah, he's been running hard all night long, and he's from Jacksonville, Florida as well. Uh, great back that they have back there. Looking, uh, in number two. Looking forward to reading uh, Ed's article tomorrow morning's paper on. Uh, is it in? There? Pardon me. And he, he also has the Greg Reed story. That's tomorrow. what I'm talking about. No, the Greg uh, Reed. Oh, that's okay. what I was talking about. Looking forward to reading that one. Yeah, absolutely. Clocks at six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Blazers in control, 37 to 10. Bad snap. He wants to throw downfield deep. Got a man down there and almost made the catch. Or did we make the catch on we an intercept we intercepted what a play there by alex webster a heck of an interception down at about the 40 36 yard line i'll tell you what i thought that that ball was on the ground he has some great hands because he picked it up right before he hit the ground alex webster i mean what some great hands it, it's it's amazing how he caught that ball that was a big play yep. as as we've seen a lot of big plays from the Valley state defense uh this year 
Blazers in there pretty much with, uh, well, still most of the offensive linemen in there. We'll try to mention those guys. But Craig back in there had a rough first. There's a flag. There's two flags. There's three flags. One, Probably a legal substitution. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've got they've got more than if I'm counting right. They got 12 out there. Well, I saw so much yellow flight around out there. It looked like I didn't know what it was. <laughs> they confused me. I thought they were throwing it on me. I mean, it came from three different directions: far side, middle of the field, home side. 6:21 to go in the third quarter. Blazers lead at 37 to 10. Inside handoff breaks clear. O'Neill has to cross the 50 down about the 47 yard line. Cedric O'Neill, first down. I'll tell you what, our, our backs, our two backs between Scott and O'Neill, we have to have a lot of yards on the ground tonight. Uh, what a great combo that we have between those two. And uh, I can't mention enough one a true freshman, one a redshirt freshman. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of them in the years to come here at Valosa State. First and 10 for the Blazers in their territory to 47. The clock's inside six minutes to go. Blazers lead 37 to 10. Going to hand it off again. He's going to come outside. O'Neill to 40, 35. He stopped, cuts back against the green. And now they said he stepped out of bounds there at about the 32. Good call. He stepped out. His foot slid out. Should give us enough for a first down. Guys, this guy, I don't know if you noticed, but he has a neck for top and going the opposite direction in split second. I mean, he can just slam on brakes and pick it back up. Yeah, that's the good part about it. That's absolutely right, Tom. He does. He, he can stop on a dime and turn in a different direction. That's what makes it so tough on the defense uh, to, to try to stop a guy like him as a running back. It makes it great for us. Here's Eric Scott in a running back. We saw Scott make a couple big runs over there at Angelo State late in that football game. He's another freshman from Washington Wilkes. Going to give it to him just off the right side, and he picks up a couple yards. And like I say, unless we get in trouble, I don't know that we will throw the football again. I would, I would think not. Yeah, why, why uh, throw the football when you have two good backs back there? You can switch out. You're up already. Uh, just get your plays in. I would hope not. Oh, it's hot with this uh, raincoat on. <laughs> Inside five minutes in the third quarter, Valosta State leading the football game 37 to 10. Going to give it to Scott off the left side and fights, digs for for a couple more yards and uh, actually picked up uh, 22, four yards on that play. I'll tell you what, sometimes you would think that Scott had Vaseline all over himself because people would try to tackle him and it just seems like they just slide right off him. He continues to go on that play right there. It could have been, you know, a three yard gain, which he gets a four or five yard gain. So we got Austin Scott, we got Eric Scott, we got Cedric O'Neill, all three freshmen, one of them a redshirt freshman. Sort of exciting for the Blazer future here. Inside of four and a half minutes to go, second, third down and short. Wants to throw, looking. Throws over the middle and right through the hands of the right receiver for Valdosta and, State. And had number 29 over here yeah. on me. I'm just no one. No that was one. Uh, Rochmel Young, the freshman up the middle. But yeah, he was over here. I was watching that too, Tom. He never, he looked at his receiver the whole way. I think that's, that's one thing that we're probably going to have to get a little bit better on. If you, if you actually want to say something about it. That's where we have to really get better on and start staring down our receivers. Going to try to pick this up on fourth down and five. Wants to throw. He does throw. First, had the first down and lost it. And I got think it. he got, got it back. Right across from good, me, good hard running. I think that was maybe 80 Chris Anderson. It was. It was. He had it. Charles came back and then was able and lost it. Then get, back to get it. it back again. That was a good uh, good sight by him to know where the first down is at and try to get back to that line. Like you said, number 80, Chris Anderson, the wide receiver, sophomore out of Brunswick, Georgia. Theseus Jackson in as a receiver again over here on this near side with Diamante Ridley, two on the far side. And I believe it's Eric Scott in the backfield. They're going to give it to Theseus off the right side. And Theseus crosses a 20 and gets That's down to about, this, about the 16, 17 yard line. But Theseus as a wide receiver put him in motion and the handoff to him. I tell you what, I, I hope Theseus gets in the end zone. He deserves to get in the end zone. Uh, hard worker, hard player. He's a team player because when you have two freshmen come in and that start before you, when you're used to being the star back and you're still committed to this team, that's a guy that I want on my team any day of the week. Second and six, 3.28 to go in the third quarter. 37 to 10, the Blazers lead it. Going to run it off the right side with the young Scott Borey and Eric Scott. Oh, they're both young. I can't call any of them young. No, no <laughs> veterans. 
Picks up a decent yardage across the 15, down to about the, just across 15 at the 14 yard line. We'll be inside three minutes on this snap. Number 38 in, guy, and I don't have a. And that would be R.J. Davis, the fullback from Fitzgerald. Eating up a lot of clock by Lost the State is on this, uh, this drive right here. Craig, the quarterback. Straight hand off quarterback keeper Craig at the 20 or the 15 dives to 10 and he's gonna, uh, they going he's gonna have first down. first down if they put it on the line it'll be first yeah down. the line judge over here is on there 238 to go first down for Valdez I just think that'll be first and goal hey Dick now these Houston doctors they're not just a great surgeons he also can uh, double as a ref he's the one that told me immediately it was the first down well he's a smart man we know that <laughs> Dr. Kirk Jake Tell him I need a seat in a couple of weeks. For yeah, North Dick Oklahoma. said to tell you he needs a seat in a couple of weeks. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Third quarter, 37 to 10. The Blazers lead it. Inside handoff. High down to about Boy. the one-yard line. Number 29 just punished. And that was Eric Scott. He's 6 foot 187. I tell you what, he ran over that guy like Mack Truck. Uh, he did. He's going to be filled with that later, later on tonight. But Eric Scott, he, I tell you, just to see him run straight up the middle uh, and just keep running no matter who got in his way. I like the way he's running it and Just trying to punch it in for another another touchdown. All right, look what this is. This is Jackson on this one right here. In the shotgun, the Blazers do remain. And off the, no, Greg keeps it and just walks in for the touchdown. That'll make it 43 to 10. I hope we see the number two offensive line next time, Dick. Yeah. Also, hope we don't see a daggone extra point block. Yeah, 43 is to make it 44 to 10. And Daniel, we've had two extra point blocked uh, this year, I believe. And they uh, go last week. Minute to go in the third quarter. Blazers in total control now, 43 to 10. Snap and holder good. The kick is good. It's good. 44 to 10. Thanks, Seth and Seth Farms again for the nice sausage uh, dog they brought up to us with mustard. I, I promise you, they'd be great hot, but I've been eating it cold between commercial breaks. Here's the kickoff. And it's going to be returned from the six. He drops it. He's on his knees. No, he said he didn't go down. Now he's going to go down. He's going to be tackled back there to the 10-yard line. I believe that was 27 on the tackle. Greg Archibong, a sophomore from uh, Lenore Ryan, Rio, Georgia. I tell you what, here is, here's it getting out of hand right here. Uh, and the referees are, are trying to get underneath control. We have to stop. Uh, it can't feed into what they have. This That's is, what I said, guys, about this score. That there's just nothing good about this point right here. Yeah, absolutely. We cannot feed into what they're trying to, to bait us into in Valosa State. I tell you, uh, you know, I seen it happening right there on the 20 yard line, uh, Tom, uh, where, where we had an Everett Waters guy on top of DC Jackson, and he was just going at it, kept going at it, kept going at it. And uh, I don't think a ref seen it until it got out of hand. Uh, hopefully, you know, this gets settled. It, more than likely, it'll probably be offset and penalties here, but we got to get this underneath control. And uh, it's good to see three Blazer teammates dragging 28 theses off the field. Uh, because again, you don't, that's the problem with teams, big, big blowout type games. This one is happening and, and Coach is bringing his team around and I, I think he'll get things squared away real Co quick here. Coach Dean, I'm sure more than likely he's going to tell them, don't feed it to what they're trying to get you to do. This is not something that you want to do. Let's play as a team, we're a family. We know how to play your smart players. Get out here, do your job, play football, nothing else, nothing more. Well, this is a long meeting here with the officials, uh, just what we wanted. Off what's already been a two hour football game. Here's one thing you got to look at it too, Tom and Dick. You got a flag back here on about 37, 38 yard line. So that flag, I'm, I'm assuming, is something happened back here. You have two flags up here, which probably more likely is going to be offset penalties of unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, so it's a lot of flags, a lot of things to think about for this referee crew. I'm glad they're huddled up. And, and trying to talk it out before they actually call the I'll call the uh, the fouls. It's long to start, so uh, if you're watching TV, the announcers, I promise you, will be griping already about how long this is taking. And hey, I'd rather take as much time as I want you to get it right uh, than to, to, to try to do it fast and don't get it right at all. They're still waiting there. There are three flags on the ground. Uh, two up between the 15 and the 20 yard, 22 yard line, then one all the way on the side field around the 30, 37 yard line, 38. 
So here we go. Listen up. Trying to listen to it. It looks like there's offsetting penalties there. Then there's a third personal foul. It sounds like somebody's ejected from Edward Waters. Two personal fouls going against Edward Waters, one going against Theseus Jackson of the Valhausen State Blazers, and they ejected one player. I didn't get to hear who was ejected. Number 20, said number 29. Not from us, but from them. Number 29 from that's them is ejected. Is that correct, that's Tom? What, that's what I heard him say. Theotis uh, White Dash Hyphen Hamilton. And all that balls back at the. Uh, it's still, it's going to be first and 12. Actually, the second. they ejected number 29 from us, Tom. That This is what we're being told. Um, didn't but, see what happened on that one. Well, Eric Scott is a running back. I don't know why he would even be in there. Yeah, that's who they ejected, and that's why Coach Dean is out there talking. Let's, I'm sure we'll figure out what happened there. Well, we'll see. Minute 27 to go. I thought he pointed at one of one of them and said, and then did his thumb up ejected. I, I promise you, I thought he did, but but our number 29 was involved in it. Yeah, absolutely. It did. It, well, that was on the kickoff too. That's when that all that wasn't a running play. Wasn't that, that was on the kickoff, wasn't it? I forgot. Not what quarter we in? <laughs> a minute 27 to go. Oh, yeah, there, third quarter. Are we re-kicking the ball down there? Is that what I heard? I believe. Uh, the referee says that we're going to re-kick the ball. Number 29 for Valhausen State has been ejected from the game. Okay. And that is our starting running back, Eric Scott. Eric Scott has been running really well, and Coach Dean's going out to talk to the White Hat. They did get two personal fouls on them, I believe, and, and one on us, and now one personal foul came with the ejection. So. Uh, this game, we can't let it get out of hand, and I'm, I'm sure the refs are saying the same thing. They don't want this to get out of hand no matter what. And the Blazers will kick off the football a long time here now, minute 27 to go. Let's hope we might get out of here before 10 o'clock, but I'm not sure now. Uh, we, uh, hopefully that, that's the last time that we see, uh, you know, a lot of personal fouls come out of this. And, I hope everybody just gets back to football, playing the game of football. Uh, we don't need any of the other activity that's going on on the field. All right, we'll re-kick it. Minute 27 to go in the third quarter, 44 to 10. Blazers have had one player ejected tonight. We don't know the details of that, probably won't. Ed Hooper, I'm sure, will ask the question. It'll be in the newspaper tomorrow morning because he's a reporter. I'm doing the play-by-play -play for Valdosta State University where my paycheck comes from. There's a line drive, and it's going to be returned from the 10. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30, and it goes down to the 31-yard line. And pretty pretty decent return, about uh, 20 yards, we'll say. Blazers will defensively go back out on the field. And, you know, early on, you know that most of their damage was done early in the game. Yeah. They've only given up, Blazers only given up 10 points in this football game, and they did apparently make some adjustments to that offense and are, are, are playing it much, much better. Absolutely. Uh, and the absolutely. rain is getting harder. Here's Brandon Herman, the quarterback. He, I like him. He's played well, I thought. They're just a straight handoff off the left side. He's going to go down and. Number 53, Dick. Picking up a uh, tackle there by Jake Smith, a junior from uh, McDonough Union Grove. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to sneeze here, I think. I th Bless you in advance, Ron. <laughs> I think if you're Edward Waters, though, coming into this game, after what you have done already thus far in this third quarter, you got to be a little bit pleased with yourself and with how you handled yourself compared to last year, well, to the, the last time that you played this Valhalla State team. Inside a minute to go in the third quarter, Blazers lead at 44-10. to 10. Quarterback keeps it, and he's going to go down. No, he's not no. down. Well, he is he, now. He's going, he's going to go down. Right. I tell you, 44 made another good play again. Kenny Murphy, but he lost him. Had a couple guys over there helping him, and I think uh, Doral White was one of them, but he was able to scramble away. And Guys, and who's number three for us, please? That's Chris Gaspari. Thank you. I tell you what, uh, 
one thing Kenny Murphy is going to learn, he's a freshman now, a linebacker outside of uh, Glenville, Georgia. He's going to learn that when you get back there, you got to wrap up and, and, and contain that quarterback. You can't just let him go. But he's a freshman. He's going to learn a lot more. Uh, it was great for him to get in that backfield, though. Third down and six. They're in the shotgun. Five seconds to go in the third quarter. They made this wait, but uh, they're not going to snap it. We'll go to the fourth quarter, leading 44 to 10. There's the snap. It's a low one. He drops back, wants to throw. He's being forced out of the pocket. Looks downfield, has a man, and overthrows him. Incomplete. It'll be, <coughs> be fourth down. And they'll have to punt the ball back to Valdosta State. Blazers with 458 yards of total offense compared to 205 for. I think you're going to see Justin go in, guys. Edward Waters. That's good. Justin right. Roberts, boy, what a fine young man he is. And he's a, a holder. He's, he's a junior. He's a team guy. He's been great with his program. A high snap going to go uh -oh. over his uh -oh. head. Back at the five-yard line, they kick it out and take the safety. And the Blazers will now lead it 46 to 10. Ain't going to get the ball back. I mean. And they'll punt the football back to Valdosta State. And I hope we're going to see that number two offense in there. I was just about to say that the, the white hat didn't throw the flag because it's an unsportsmanlike like when you kick the ball to go outside of uh, the, the end, end zone. And I, you can see the flake referee come in and say, throw the flag because yeah. it, it is an unsportsmanlike like yeah. uh, play. Our good friend Whit Chapel seems to think we're going to see the Ooh, number two. Uh, sprinkling pretty good now, Charles. Yeah, that's, hey, how, how do y'all know? Y'all up in the daggone booth. <laughs> we're, we're these guys are up here talking you. about, I think it's raining harder. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's got a little rain down. Type Marty, what do you think? No, it's not raining hard. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all got hair. I can feel it on my head. If I if I was Coach Dean, you probably take the penalty because you can score a touchdown or you or you can just take the safety. Um, but I wonder if the safety, you have to, let's listen. So it is spotted at the two. Yep, absolutely. You, uh, that's that's one thing that you have the option of doing. You could either take the safety, uh, or you could actually get the ball and score six points. So that's the two options that you take. And Coach David Dean rather than take the pillow. Here's the stats for uh, Valdez State with 458 yards of total offense compared to 205 for them. They've only rushed it for 129 yards this game, and that's well, well under their uh, average. Austin Scott has been ejected, but he finished with uh, 10 rushes for net 97. Cedric O'Neill, 10 rushes for 71, a touchdown. Caden Cochran with five for 76 and two touchdowns. Dick, the most important thing there, though, think about it. Austin Scott is going to be, it's probably going to affect, uh, affect his playing time at uh, West Georgia. There's a handoff on touchdown on the, oh, no, he kept the ball. I thought he handed Austin tried to get in the end zone, but he didn't. I was wondering about that, if there was any uh, yes. next game yeah. suspension. I, yes. I, I think it is. And, and just to get it correct, is Eric Scott the guy that got uh, ejected. Austin Scott still in the game. Eric Scott's the one so that got So 29 got ejected. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. 29 okay. got ejected. Austin back under center here. Four, just that way here in the fourth quarter. Look who's that quarterback, Justin Roberts. Now we, Justin on that last play, gonna try to get in there again. They're gonna try to shove him in and line judge is not signaling. He said, nope, he's not oh, wow. in yet. Wow. I don't see how he did get in on that one. Justin scored his first touchdown of his career a few weeks ago against Fort Valley State. They're trying to get him another one here. Let's see what we're going to do. They're going to line up with uh, one back there in the backfield. Quarterback sneak, and he gets in there this time. Touchdown for Valdosta State's Justin Roberts, his second of the season, and his first two of his career here at Valdosta State. He's from DeBerry, Florida, down there in the land area. 13-37 to go, and he'll stay in the game and hold on the extra point. If I'm correct, that means every quarterback that has came in for Valdosta State tonight you has scored it. a touchdown. You got it. I was going to tell you that. Also, uh, the Austin the Austin Scott thing, he cannot play the first half of next week. He can start and come in the second half next hey, week. Hey, Tom, no, that's, is that's, it, is that's it, Eric Scott that it, actually I'm got sorry, kicked I'm out. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, 29. Snap was high and good. Gets a kick through there, though. That'll make it 50. 10. 
Blazers make it 51 to 10 on the rushing touchdown there. And uh, Charles, you got some information on that. Yeah, I believe that was the sixth rushing touchdown tonight against Edward Waters, which is second in school history. The first, what, seven rushing touchdowns came against Edward Waters in 2009. Here's the kick. It's a pretty good one, and the range come down pretty decently right now inside at the four, and he's tackled at about the 20-yard line. Bunch of Blazers over there. I see 44. I see... Been calling his name a lot. Also saw uh, Deontay Ridley, Ridley, and 44, Kitty Murphy. I'll tell you what. One thing that you can tell right now is that the speech that Coach Dean had with the players uh, after the you know the penalties and things like that is coming to effect. They're helping the other Edward Waters players off the field and things of that nature. Now, good sportsmanship by the Blazers. Strong safety, Davis Durham, a sophomore from Colquitt County. We lost to Lowndes High School last night in there for the Blazers. They put a guy in motion. Quarterback keeps it, pitches it, and a good tackle. Uh, not a good tackle, but he did slow him down over there, and that was 32 for that Austin State. Mel Magwood. I'm wondering if that, uh, if that number 32 is going to be retired one day. That's uh, Larry Dean. You would think so. You would, you would think that, that number 32 will be retired one day. Um, of course, because of the great things that Larry Dean has done for this university. Broke your Jess Tuggles career record for tackles here mm -hmm. at Austin State, a possible Hall of Famer one day. Get how many jerseys we do have retired. I'm not sure. I imagine Hatcher's jersey is retired. Tuggles' number is probably retired. Here's second and ten. Quarterback hands it off. Got some running down, and there's that 44 again, Tom. I'll tell you what, Kenny 44, is, he, he's fast. He's a fast linebacker. Uh, Kenny Murphy, a six-foot, 244-pound freshman out of Glenville, Georgia. He is very fast. And you have a you have a flag down on the field. Wonder what this is going to be here. Came from the back, Judge. And we're going to see. That's a personal foul on their side. Wesley Files, a freshman from Coconut Creek, uh, Florida. A lot of Florida players, of course, and, uh, and quite a few from Georgia. I was trying to see the closest. Uh, I know they have one guy from Lake City, Florida, number 17, and a freshman linebacker. Of course, quite a few from Jacksonville, Miami, Fort Myers, Ocala, all over the state of Florida, and as far away as Texas. Yeah. So here we go. It's third and 20. 12 minutes and 40 seconds to go in the football game. Lasers lead it 51 to 10. Just a straight inside handoff from right there to meet him was 73 Hunter Chumley. And threw him to the ground. What type of recruitment and trip? There's another flag on the ground. What type of recruiting trip was this for uh, Edward Waters to go to the Bahamas and get a player from there? Uh, they got a player on the roster from the Bahamas. That's a clip on that. cost him. I would have volunteered for that trip. <laughs> There's Port St. Lucie, Florida recruit. Uh, That's uh, just a little short drive from where I was uh, raised in high school. Nassau, the Bahamas. I think we went on a cruise there last Christmas. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It usually stops there. Uh, you know, you, you hit those two islands right there and then come back. 51 to 10. You know, I, I love these blowouts, but I just lose focus in the football game, really, and, and, <laughs> and which is quite obvious. And thankfully, Tom's not up here because when we're together up here, it's just not good. And probably one day it would cost one of us our job. So it's good that Tom's on the field. And here we go for the punt from Edward Waters. So see what, uh, see what number four, Quinn Ro Roverson, can do for us. There's the punt. End over end. Quinn's going to get a chance to return it from the 50, drops it. Look when someone goes straight up the middle and just, you know, dropped it, just said, heck with this, I'm just going to run straight ahead. He's at the 35-yard line. Quinn is so fast. I mean, he, he, he got that ball, and he still got, you know, positive yardage out of something that shouldn't have been positive yardage at all. And so the Blazers lead 51-10. to 10. We'll feel much better getting up at 6.30. We'll actually get up at 5.45 tomorrow morning, go meet Coach Dean at 6.30 for uh, the show. The TV show. And, uh, I'd, I'd like maybe one time we could have a live audience down there. I'm sure that people would find that extremely entertaining. I'll get up, Dick. Or I'll come. <laughs> or I'll come cheer for you. Or boring, one of the two. 
There's a handoff inside, got some room, breaks spirit to 30, bounces off a tackle at the 25-yard line. That's uh, Greg Archibong. And uh, y'all call some new numbers in there, guys. I think they all are pretty new. We're trying to. There's 81. Number 50. In there, I see. And that's uh, Rochmel Young, a freshman wide receiver. And the running back we just mentioned, uh, Greg Archibong, he's a sophomore from, uh, he's a transfer from Lenore Ryan. Yeah. 87, Connor. Uh, Witherton, a wide receiver, six foot from sophomore. Robert's going to keep it. He's at the 20, gets down about the 17 yard line. He, Justin, actually, uh, during the offseason, I think he's probably there. He works out at Kendall uh, with carts and things. And uh, just a super young guy, well thought of and respected by the people out there at the Kendall Country Golf Course. And uh, he's, a, he's a, a fine young man. In fact, his, his brother, I think I was told by the pro out there, uh, is a a PGA Golf Pro down in uh, Florida somewhere. Wow. And off again, off the left side, and that's the number 27 Archibong. Picks up a couple. It's going to be third and short, about a yard or two. Looks like two yards. Be inside 11 minutes right now. Blazers going to go three and two on the season, and then, boy, next two games, well, the rest of the schedule. Got uh, West Georgia. North Alabama Delta State in a row. Inside handoff, there he goes straight up the middle. Touchdown run for R.J. Davis, a sophomore from Fitzgerald. He went in there untouched, makes it 57. And that, I believe that does tie the record for the top school record. And it was against Edward Waters 2009. Now it's against Edward Waters here in 2012. So that does tie the school record, I believe. Flashers lead it 57 to 10. This for the extra point. And, you know, nobody can say anything because, you know, Coach Dean Scott basically is, is number three quarterback in there. That's 58 to 10. Welcome back to the stadium. We're trying to find the records. The are breaking night. That, that uh, touchdown right there tied the uh, school record for rushing touchdowns, which was set against this same team a couple of years ago. And uh, Sean Reed tells us that six more rushing yards will be the most, the second most ever. Uh, in the, uh, the second most ever in uh, school history, uh, we have three. We have 313 now for the fourth most school Makes history. Makes clear on the return. It's a good return. He could take this distance. Somebody's going to run him down, and he tripped up. Still on his feet at the 20, the 15. They blaze are him down at the five yard line. A huge run of about 95 yards, and there is a flag at the 17 yard line. Nine times out of ten, or ten times out of ten, that's always going to be on the return. I knew that the official was okay on the outside line. He actually took a pretty hard fall uh, trying to get down there to cover that play. Nice return there, but I tell you, give the Blazers credit. Even with the huge lead, they didn't. Uh, nobody let up right there. But we, uh, the Blazers, have a chance with six more rushing yards, which. It's a 15-yard personal foul. Now move it back from the uh, three to the 18-yard line. 10:22 to go in game, and I'm at the point, and the coaches probably just let's get this over as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's what her said. Her, <laughs> that was and I, I'm wondering just, about the clock running, but they didn't. Nobody wanted part of that. I'm going to say it too, Tom. I, I don't think we should skip the game anymore. I don't care if we need a game or not. I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't think so when I heard we were paying them. Yep. I know we had to have a game, but if we can find somebody else. I don't. I don't think we should schedule any more with uh, with Edward Waters. I think it's a downside. 10:22 to go in the football game. Blazers lead at 58 to 10. Edward Waters had a huge uh, kickoff return, but a penalty moved it back to the 32-yard line. They got two guys moving at the same time, and that's going to be another penalty. And they've had, they've had a jillion penalties tonight. It seems like they had nine at the end of the third quarter, and they've had a probably close to nine since then. Find anything, Charles? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was just the same stats that we gave out before, you yeah, know, for the, the rush of the tents and stuff like that. Uh, but we're getting close to a lot of records here. Yeah, we really are. And another penalty is going to move it back. Uh, all the way to the 37 yard line. 10 minutes and eight seconds, clock is running. Valsta State, we head into West Georgia. The team will leave Friday, make the trip up there and play at two o'clock on uh, Saturday. Ed and Charles will be on the air at uh, 
Seven thirty. There was just a run inside, pick up about two or three. They should see if the game's at two o'clock, they'll be on the air at eleven thirty on next Saturday with the uh, tailgate show. And then we'll take it about 20 minutes after one in that neighborhood. Clock is running. That's the Thank goodness. goodness. I'm going to be dedicated and do the interview for you, Dick. What? We'll be dedicated and, and we'll stick around for Coach Dean. All right. And uh, quarterback roll now wants to throw, does throw incomplete. There's a flag, and that's probably going to be on about Oscar State. We have to we have to be discipline on that right there. I mean, yeah, the game I, is out of hand. I, 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 yeah. I know that's the game hit people, but you have, have common sense. Absolutely. You see number 54 for us actually point to himself, Brad Williamson, and saying, my bad, guys, you know, I, that's my fault. But uh, we'll interview us after the game, and we'll also uh, try to pick somebody to interview here. Dick, I'm on, not staying in the rain to do it, partner. I'm going to try to find a spot if we do it. All right. Well, Tom, it's rain like this. I don't know that stuff will work over there in the shelter. Well, and nah, I'm not sure, and I'm just getting wet. It didn't bring me fun to do it, so. All right, we'll just, for, just tell David what we're talking about. We'll before go with this game. Is that okay, we all? Yeah, that's good. That's good. First down, first and 10. All sweep to the right side, number 20, and he's going to be hit low and the tackle high. 37 was low on the tackle, and uh, I believe it's 20. Xavier Crane hit him behind full set. Davis Burma, strong safety from Caldwell County, hit him low. I, th I think they've got a few new players in there, Dick. Yeah, they still they got their circle kicker. I was surprised at what we have in there. This this team ought to do pretty well in the AIA, though. They're not, they're not bad. It's second down eight. Clock's running eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. They moved down. Yeah, they did. Quack rose out, throws back against the body. Got a man open, in play. Should have been caught for a touchdown. Should have been sacked. Should have been caught. Should have bought my range. <laughs> oh, that's one thing that you're right about, Tom. You should have bought your range, too. Well, I got part of it on. I just didn't bring anything to cover this equipment up and then still be able to talk. But I'm leaning up against the side of the uh, bleachers and uh, kind of covering my rain up a little bit. But uh, I've got to get to Perry's uh, months of this and it'll work because I've been through three Tonight. And, uh, and I know one was brand spanking new box. As you. Eight minutes to go. Wants to throw in. Get pressure. He's going to avoid the sack. Now he's going to go down. He fumbles right into the hands of one player coming in. Hit the time. I says he comes up a, a good hit. I think that's probably the best catch you slime ever have. The hands of a lineman to went right to his hands. That's amazing. Number 91. And it would be uh, Dora White of Sabor. It's 268 from Stone Manor. Back. You give it back to him? Oh, okay. Well, never mind. He did catch the ball, but I guess uh, in the motion of going down. Uh, first down, too, guys. I feel bad. He's been a fumble for the supporter for the Velas Today Times at Hooper. Yeah. What's the throw? Looking downfield. He's got a man down there throws it underneath him. In yeah, absolutely. Cameron, the old cornerback, 58 pounds freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Never turned around and played great coverage by him. Never turned around. That would have been a pick off, a, a pick, and he could have ran it all the way back, probably for six minutes. Under three minutes to go. He's uh, in classes. Kill the clock, yeah, absolutely. So, Lasers lead at 58 pin. We'll be in the air. Reminder, you watch Coach Dean TV tomorrow at 1230 on WALB Channel 10 out of Albany. Drops back, he wants to throw again, looking, throws down field, and intercepted. Tipped and intercepted. Number 54. And that would be Fred Williamson, a junior from uh, Georgia Military College. And the I'm not sure who made that. Yeah, it was a combination there. That was, uh, that's, that's not the right corner, go in the right pocket. It was the same. And so the Pacers will send Justin Roberts, quarterback, back out to uh, finish this game out. Justice about to play a lot more this year in Figurewood. Just going to run this thing for another seven and a half minutes and 7.46, and we'll get out of here pretty quickly tonight. In that handoff, picks up. And with the run there, I was sitting. Uh, 
Looks like, I guess, uh, third six on the run there. That's Trent McGuire, Jr. from uh, Central, who's up in S. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get all the numbers. A lot of new players, a lot of new faces getting for a lot of eight. We're not trying to score at all. So we're getting players in there to hold open up. And here is that play the very long time to run the ball. This bad. You don't want to be a wide though, because you don't get it. Well, yeah, that's true. I think. Austin, or Justin Keith is at the 30, the 40, and he runs down there, or is running out of bounds. And Justin Roberts. Nice job. He knows this offense well. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny on that play. Uh, I'll see in there, Michael Miller. Let's see. Uh, I think that uh, step there in a minute. I'll see in there, Michael Miller, uh, 6 1 sophomore. He closed the field. First and 10 on board, two yard line. Cox running six and a half minutes. There's going to win some quite easily. Hand off off the line. Center Trent McGuire is with 58 to 10. The total run to a night is second all time. There's a pocket even to break that curtain. Sure. Dick. What's that, Tom? I had, uh, I had my little umbrella in the thing. I can actually do, I can give this to uh, Coach Dean when he gets I guess the running yards, if it's where we're talking yeah. about, 319 was the rushing yards before about what? It's West Alabama, October 6, 1990. Now uh, we have uh, hit that market high. Second half, Austin, six. Quarterback, keep that anything. Let's pull down there to lose about four yards. Third down. Tell us, it's from a pretty good number. I mean, I'm yeah. But I'll just don't, don't worry about it. me. Great victory. Not look like it's in future for Valstead. Uh, something that we needed. Uh, this is the medicine. This is the do dosage we needed. Um, you know, for those hurting pains that we had over the last loss that we took. Inside five minutes on this snap, and uh, Jack's going to probably get out of here quick. We'll get some fucking stats. It's been pretty hard. We're just going to get into the locker room. Pat Lane, the Henry 2 is going to be down at Jack Gilmore for all the pushers. Well, five minutes and seconds for me in the game. They used to the offensive line for Sir Valstead. Don't feel, you know, protected back there. Gave him high. Figure out what he wanted to do. Go for them. Here's Dominic Massey. And it's his second punt. The freshman wobbly, wobbly kick up there. It's going to hit and bounce into favor. Foul out of the state inside the 10. Whoops. At the 11. So this fourth is 50. He's got to go hard out of the field. Out of here. <laughs> Yo, I guess we're holding for too much right here. Uh, they've been seeing what they do. We're at 330 yards right now. 53 yards shot of school, which is 291 yards against Arkansas Tech. September 5th, 1999. Do you think we're going to hit that? No. So let's stop up and get a big run up. 99 in Mike Kelly's last year, which would have been my scare calling that. I, I vaguely remember that. Inside tackles, they tried to run. It looks like he's kind of looking at so. Even Bernie, you got to probably just gonna, yeah, no, so. no time out you would take. For record, we're in two much needed wins. We get ready to head to the stretch of West Point. I'm to say, just a little game, and then we go shorter to end the season. Boy, the season is just fine. Yeah. We're now at the same Kings for the game of the season here. Yeah. yeah. I have to play out. Off inside games within the cross point out of the short down inside th four minutes. Yeah. What I'm say, it's actually pretty hard. We it's a great deal. Let's get some back on the face. Not working hard after the big loss. Lost our coming. I'm choosing to do this on fever victory. But I say 27 0. Lots of running. Was it 50 10? I think both of us line that one. And the reason is that coach didn't pick the reason is that I'm over the mic. Is he going to climb only? Yeah. This is uh, a mission to Dana Rio show up on Monday next at the Holly Inn. I may try to make my habit. I've been making here and I need to go to this one. Yes, if you got to do rock. Uh, <laughs> not, not a lot. Country time in all field. Everyone all time term. I think it's just one chance to fool the team. I'll see you. Uh, uh, no. Absolutely. Uh, I can throw foot. And he's sacked. And five. Maybe in any one they're going to get It was funny that the back was off the fly when they're going to punt the football. This is back in up there, it's returning the, the punt. Yeah, you saw the guys there as well, don't play. They see that with you in there, so, uh, you know, see them there. Yeah, they let kids be play for all this. You can easily have a lot of privilege in history. But next, we're going to cross the field of the board. We're going to take over the football game. We're going to take over the football game. We're going to take over the football game. Then we'll play them twice. Uh, so that was early in short. This was just a hat shot. And I'll talk about it. And coaches certainly players are talking about it. But after that second goal, you have that option of what you call that offense. Um, they run pretty well. Yeah. And off the side of a first yard. You're absolutely right. I like how they know the how they came out, how they made all those, and how they were. I mean, they lost week, we didn't have to take just the other. The phone cycle was him out. That's me here. The legal institution. It's an effort. As there every hate called the game. Everybody in the state and pushing the media. You gotta be like, who the fuck had to move? He's not. He's I'm going to go here. 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 I'm going